okay welcome to this lecture of discrete time fourier analysis this is part 1 we'll be talking about discrete fourier series discrete fourier transform rather discrete time fourier transform discrete fourier transform and the applications of it so today on part 1 lecture we will talk about this first two topics discrete time fourier series and discrete time fourier transforms so now <coughs> we will find out the proper techniques to analyze the signal spectrum this is an illustration of the different signals and associated fourier analysis techniques so in the right column we can see that uh, there are four different categorical signals number 1 this is aperiodic and uh, it is continuous analog signal so the corresponding technique is the fourier transforms to analyze the frequency spectrum similarly for continuous time analog and periodic signals we'll be using fourier series to get the spectrum of the signals now the interestingly if we sample this first one that is continuous time aperiodic signal we will get the discrete time aperiodic signals and the technique for analyzing the frequency spectrum of this kind of signal is called discrete time fourier transform similarly if we sample the periodic continuous time signals it will provide discrete periodic signals and uh, the corresponding technique is discrete fourier transform but discrete fourier transform and discrete time fourier series these are somehow correlated to each other and uh, discrete fourier transform is most widely used for practical applications now this is one example of input periodic signals uh, uh, in discrete domain as you can see from here that this is a discrete sequence spikes are discrete sequence so uh, this this particular spike is again repeating here and it is followed by the same sequence ad, as it is uh, in the uh, previous section so uh, this interval is called period period intervals for discrete time periodic signals so now the analysis equation so discrete time fourier series uh, is basically a block we can consider about this block can be solved through analytical uh, solution process or it can be solved through computer programming so we are now looking at the analytical equations involved in this dtfs block so this is called analysis equation ck equals to 1 by n summation n equals to 0 to capital n minus 1 xn and it is multiplied with a function exponential function this is called the carnell function of dtfs where capital n is the period small k is the frequency bin index and capital f is the frequency in hertz and this is the relation which uh, will help us to find out the relation between frequency bin index and frequency in hertz so now one interesting property uh, dtfs coefficient belongs to uh, that is uh, periodicity property that is c small k c suffix k plus n equals to ck that means the fourier series coefficients also uh, a periodic sequence of the same period value as the signal is as you can see from the analysis equation that ck it is asking for computing the ck values for all values of k from minus infinity to plus infinity for every integer values but now as uh, dtfs belongs to a specific category of periodicity cat uh, periodicity category so we need to only compute the ck values within a particular fundamental range that is 0 to n minus 1 and the spectrum of the dtfs is discrete as you can see that ck values are associated to each k values and all the k values are integer so the spectrum is discrete now we'll consider one example let's say x xt is a input analog signal which is passing through a sample block of sampling frequency 4 hertz and then passing through a dtfs block now we are asked to compute ck coefficients and we have to plot the ck coefficient over a frequency range of minus 2 to plus 2 hertz as you can see that uh, input signal sine wave has a frequency 1 hertz so sampling frequency 4 hertz is sufficient enough to uh, capture the information of the input message so these are the figures of both the signals before sampling and after sampling 
after sampling we can see that uh, we have uh, these spikes which are in the sample instance so within a fundamental range we have one two three four samples so capital n equals to four in this particular problem now xn the discrete time signal will uh, will have a form sine in pi by two so if we put the value of sampling frequency within that equations continuous time signal function equations we will come up with this particular expression now ck is equals to analytical equation will take the form 1 by capital n equals to 4 0 to 4 minus 1 and this is the kernel function and we will only compute the ck values over the range 0 to 3 for k values so this is uh, the input sequence this is the analytical equation for dtfs of the signals therefore c0 will be 0 c1 is equals to minus j 0 0.5 c2 equals to 0 and c3 equals to j 0 0.5 so now as uh, the question is asking about the frequency uh, asking about the coefficients over the range minus 2 hertz to plus 2 hertz so we have to compute the associated bin index values as you can see that uh, this is the relation between bin index and frequency hertz so while in frequency is equals to 2 hertz that corresponds to bin index k equals to 2 and while frequency equals to minus 2 hertz corresponds to bin index k equals to minus 2 so c of minus 1 equals to c of minus 1 plus capital n that is equals to 4 for this problem so this is c3 already we completed c3 value so c of minus 1 equals to j 0 0.5 c of minus or similarly c of minus 2 equals to c2 equals to 0 so this is the amplitude plot as you can see that is the magnitude value of the ck's over the frequencies so while frequency equals to minus 2 hertz associated to k equals to 2 k equals to 2 means ck that is c2 its magnitude equals to 0 so that is 0 while frequency equals to minus 1 hertz minus 1 hertz from this equation if we put there minus 1 corresponds to k equals to minus 1 so k equals to minus 1 means c of minus 1 that is equals to j 0 0.5 its magnitude part is 0 0.5 it is 0 0.5 similarly c0 c1 and c2 we can find it out from there and uh, accordingly the signal amplitude spectrum is plotted now this is discrete time Fourier transform <coughs> so here we will consider x of n is the input discrete time aperiodic signals if we pass it through a dtft analysis block it returns spectrum of the signal x of n so x of n and x of omega these two are called discrete time Fourier transform pairs and this equation analysis equation is x of omega is equals to summation n equals to minus infinity to plus infinity signal sequence and this is the kernel function so this is called analysis equation the spectrum x of omega has two important property one is the spectrum is continuous function of omega and the spectrum x of omega is periodic over minus pi to plus pi range so as the function x of omega is continuous so while we will be get back we will get back the signal x of n from idtft block so we will be using integrations instead of a summation and as the signal as, as the signal uh, spectrum signal x of omega is periodic over twice pi so integration is carried over twice pi and this is scaled by a twice pi factor this equation is called synthesis which will return back spectrum to its time domain this is one example of dtft and idtft block so this will give you an idea about uh, how these two are correlated to each other input signal is a sample version of a continuous gate function if we take its discrete time Fourier transform it would produce x of omega which has two component magnitude part and phase part so magnitude part is essentially sync functions amplitude values and the associated uh, phase part is this so if, if we recombine these two uh, different spectrum and uh, input to the IDTFT block it would return me the original x of n sequence in time domain so how DTFT is related to Z transforms let's assume that xn is a signal and its Z transformation is x sub Z and this xz has an ROC which includes unit, unit circle 
what it means that means over the unit circle z transformation of the signal is finite so under that condition we can compute the signals dtft directly from the z transformation the condition is that you need to compute the z transformation of the signals over the unit circle and that function is exactly same as the functions discrete time fourier transform so that's why fourier transform can be viewed as a z transformation of the sequence on the unit circle the condition is the signal z transformation roc must contain unit circle within its roc so now this is uh, one example which will make you understand about the relation between z transformation as you can see a to the power n un this is infinite duration causal discrete time signals if we take its z transformation it would produce 1 by 1 minus a z to the power minus 1 and roc modulus of z is greater than a that means exterior of our circle in the z plane similarly if we do analysis if we do analysis equation to compute dtft of the signals we will find out 1 by 1 minus a e to the power minus j omega so if we try to avoid this particular path then also we can compute this function x of omega directly from its x sub z function how just we need to put z equals to e to the power j omega what does it mean that means this is signi this signifies the unit circle in the z plane so on the unit circle we are computing z transformation and that is nothing but x of omega so how this dtft and lti systems related as you all know that if it is an lti systems linear time invariance discrete time systems where h of n is the impulse response and h of omega is called frequency response and these two are dtft pair discrete time fourier transform what does it mean that is if we apply h of n at the input of the dtft block it would produce x h of omega now if input is x of n of our lti system output y of n related in time domain in this by this equation that x of n linear convolution with h of n similarly if we take the spectrum of the input signal x of omega through dtft and if we take the spectrum of the output signal y of n uh, through dtft that is y of omega these two are related by a simple multiplication of input spectrum and the frequency response of the system so this is a very uh, important concept to solve some practical problems so now we will be uh, in the next slide we will be considering such kind of problem let's say this is one example what is this that means we are given a discrete time lta systems by its discrete uh, difference equation <coughs> what is this y n equals to x n minus a y of n minus 1 where a value equals to 0 0.5 real coefficient x of n signal is given that is a summation of 5 plus a sinusoidal component and it is asked what is the system output the very first step is we can develop the system transfer function let's see the system transfer function h of z takes the form 1 by 1 minus a z to the power minus 1 and roc exterior of a radius of a so now we can compute the frequency response directly from there just simply putting z equals to e to the power j omega already we have seen in my earlier discussions now if we do that we have now h of omega that is the frequency response now frequency response in general can have complex number uh, can have uh, imaginary and the real parts so that's why we can uh, separate it out through our amplitude and phase component so this h of omega mod is is the amplitude part of the frequency response and theta omega is the phase part of the frequency response of the system now let's talk about the input now we have to identify the input signal target frequency input signal input input signal frequencies that we will call as a target frequencies so input signal consists of a summation of two component one is 5 volt one is uh, rather uh, if it is a voltage signal this is 5 volt this is sine n pi by 2 volt so this 5 is basically a static that means it is a dc component so its omega value equals to zero and this is a sinusoidal component its frequency omega equals to pi by 2 all these omegas are in radian per sample unit now as the system is lti so we may consider that we are taking input uh, input signals part one that is uh, five uh, just only five and passing to the systems 
and collecting the system response. This is one part at the output. Similarly, if we take the second part of the input, pass it through the systems and collect the system response, then recombining these two to produce the final output. So that is the concept which can be applicable for LTS systems. So now while input signal 5 is applied to the system, system will offer a gain to this particular signal at a specific frequency omega equals to 0 because this signal's frequency component is omega equals to 0. Similarly, while input signal is signed in pi by 2, its frequency is pi by 2, so system will offer a gain to this particular signal which is specific to omega equals to pi by 2. So our target is to compute h of omega and h of, uh, h of omega for omega equals to 0 and omega equals to pi by 2. So if we compute, we will find h of omega for omega equals to 0 equals to 2 and h of omega for omega equals to pi by 2 is this. So now if this is the input signal, if it is passing through the systems with a equals to 0 0.5, so the output, final output is yn equals to 10 plus this. So how this trends comes here, 10 comes here. So just look at back, 5 into this particular function h of omega omega equals to 0. As you can see h of omega omega equals to 0, it comes out to 2. So 2 into 5 equals to 10. Similarly, uh, sine of uh, n pi by 2 into h of omega at omega equals to pi by 2. Omega equals to pi by 2 has two components. This is the magnitude part. This is the phase part. So magnitude part is basically altering the amplitude of the sine wave and the phase part is basically altering the phase part of the sinusoids. So, so uh, this is basically 0 0.89 is the magnitude of that into one of the sine wave and sine wave own phase n pi by 2 minus 0 0.46. So this is the uh, final output. Okay, so thank you for this particular lecture, part one of uh, Fourier analysis, special in the discrete domain. So in the next uh, part, we will be discussing about discrete Fourier transform and uh, its associated problems.